Hi everyone, it's Lehman with Lace Covered Skies. I'm here today with an estate sale haul that I went to so long ago. I don't even remember when I went. Maybe the end of last summer or something like that. And I don't remember what I got, but I do remember there were a lot of old magazines. So let's get into it and we can see together what I found that day. Now, this is one of the magazines. I remember when dish soap used to look like that in that type of container. It looks cooler for some reason. But this is a Better Homes and Garden magazine from 1972, originally 50 cents. And <clears throat> just really cool images. Now this was in the garage, so I don't really like to buy I know I can be a little bit picky, but they had a lot more magazines and I don't really like to buy a lot of magazines that are in the garage. Um, I know they had 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond magazines, um, but by the time I got there, because I only go on the last day at the last hour, they only had like some 70s ones, so I didn't get as many as I would have if there were more 50s and 60s. Um, but yeah, just these really cool pictures. It's very dusty, um, which is another reason why I don't really like finding things in the garage. She is bead weaving over here. That is so cool. How to make something of the winter doldrums. Rug making. Um, quilting. Needlepoint. I feel like they did needlepoint a lot back then. I don't know what that is. It just says rubbing. I feel like crafts back then were so much more of a thing. Chair caning, I love the caning weave. I don't know if that's what you call it, but I love that look. <clears throat> Decoupage, block printing. Ankle loom weaving. I wish I lived during this time. I mean, I did, but I was very young. And by the 80s, people were not doing these things anymore. <laughs> so cool. All right. And I do love these bigger pages. I like finding a really cool image that takes up the whole page and then either putting it into the center of the signature or making a faux center of the signature. I did a video on how I do that. I just love, especially if it's very remis reminiscent of that time. Look at these books. It's an ad for these cookbooks. And I feel like I've definitely found some of these while thrifting. Okay, so very cool magazine. All right, we're gonna kind of come away from magazines for a little bit because they're at the bottom of the pile. But this is not going to be for a junk journal. I'm actually gonna read this. I love reading children's lit ever since I started um, working with elementary aged kids. I don't work with them anymore, but
but when I did and when I was getting my teaching credential, I loved reading children's lit and I have not stopped. I remember reading this as a kid, so I think that might be fun to reread. Um, this I bought for a junk journal cover because I would never read a mystery, like that's too scary for me. But it's a Nancy Drew book. It's copyright 1971. And I thought it was pretty cool because it's this type of cover. cover. Okay, the pages are stuck together a little bit. I love the book blocks from Nancy Drew Books. The quality of the page, the thickness. Love it. So I need to get that cleaned up. Okay, these are two books that I wanted to read. It's from the 70s, I believe. Copyright 1975. I love reading children's literature from the 70s and the 80s. My absolute favorite. And this is a series. It's about Addie, I guess. And I really want to read this. So we're going to get that cleaned up. I found a Scrabble game. I'm telling you, this house was dusty and dirty, which is why I think I didn't touch this pile of things for so long. But this Scrabble game looks old, and I love the color of the box. And some pieces in here. I would love to turn these into charms one day when I figure out how. Like, I'd, learn, I'd have to screw a hole, right? All right. I found some vintage flashcards. Love that they're so yellowed and they just look so different. It's not that thick of a stack. I think I found it inside of a box with some more modern ones, but I just grabbed these. And then here come the magazines. This is from 1972, originally 50 cents, Better Homes and Garden. And I love using these in junk journals, but I've also using like, you know, the lesser pictures, <laughs> the ones that are like D-list pictures. Um, I love, love using them in glue books as well. So that's kind of, I kind of figure if it's not like a stellar magazine. Um, I love this right here. If it's not like the most awesome page or image, I could definitely use it in a glue book. So we've got that. Let's see where I can pile this. All right. This is from 1962. So they had some 1960s stuff left. But most of them were gone, sadly, because I just come on the last day. Um, and I thought this might have some good things, but I don't really see anything that I love right now. That's kind of a cool article. Wigways through 60 centuries. 18th century. Wait, does it continue somewhere? <laughs> I thought we would see wigs from 60 different centuries. Okay, so this... That's a cool image. It's very artsy.
course, more cigarette ads, as is reminiscent of that time. This is 1962, another Life magazine. They had a lot of Life magazines from the 60s, and I did not, I don't think I got that many of them. This is a cool image right here with the car, but I didn't get that many of them because they're not... Well, that's a cool ad, even though it's a cigarette ad. <laughs> um, I just felt like there weren't that many images inside that I could use. So I was really looking through a lot of them and picking and choosing. That's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. But yeah, another Life magazine from 1962. I like that over there. Cornflakes. This is really cool. Wow, we'll get the color of that. Another cool ad right here. Okay, so this one was a pretty good one. This was a good pick. Love this. All right, I can't wait until the hot weather so I could like just sit outside and like really clean this and dust it off. This is from 1961. This might be good in a glue book. I like how they took that picture. Another Life magazine from 1964. This one is from 1969. I have been thinking about selling some magazines because I found so many um, and I was wondering if you guys would be interested in buying any of these magazines from the 50s, 60s, 70s or even older if I find them because sometimes I go to estate sales and I find tons and tons of magazines but I hesitate to bring them all back because I don't think I'll use them all even though I'll still hoard them ironically <laughs> um, but if you guys would be interested in stuff like this let me know down below like if you'd be interested in buying any of these because um, I would buy more if I knew people were interested um, and I have been thinking about opening up an Etsy shop I had been kind of trying to decide between selling on eBay but not as an auction just because I've sold on eBay before and instead of having a shop on Etsy I would just have it on eBay um, or I would open up a shop on Etsy so I'm not sure which one just to like um, sell the next 
set of journals that I have coming up. But if you guys would be interested in any of this kind of stuff too, like more vintage stuff and like the stuff that I find at estate sales and thrift stores and stuff like that, let me know down below. Um, but this one is from 1959 and it was originally 10 cents. Wow, this is such a cool picture. I would love that even for a cover. And look at that little dog watching the kids. Love these colors. Love this picture here. This is a Women's Day magazine. Yeah, so I like the pictures in Women's Day magazine. There was an estate sale that I went to before where they had tons, and I mean hundreds of Women's Day magazines, and I really wanted to get like a lot of them, but I only ended up getting like six or seven or something. Um, but that's another situation where if I knew that people would be interested, I would have just gotten so many, and yeah. And sometimes I don't know if like, Am I, is it like, like stupid for me not to get them because who knows if I'll ever find them again or is it crazy to get them because who knows what I'm going to do with all of these, but they're just so cool. And when they're cool like that, if I had like a museum or something, <laughs> I would definitely just want to have so many of these just to preserve because I mean once these are gone they're gone forever um, I think about that a lot because I find a lot of stuff from the 70s and 80s and then the 50s and 60s are a little less um, available out there anymore and 30s and 40s oh my god i would love to find 30s and 40s stuff i've only found some and stuff from the 1900s of course we don't find them anymore but just imagine like from the 80s if we would have gone to estate sales in the 80s there would have been stuff back from further you know what i mean so it's kind of like these things will run out eventually this is from 1959 again it looks like so with my hoarding mentality, knowing that things are going to run out, I'd rather just like get it. <laughs> Look at those colors. I love this image so much. That's just super cool. Wow, this kind of looks Brady Bunchy to me. You know, I know Brady Bunch came a little bit after, but it's kind of reminds me of that, of their house. Look at that dessert. It's for, it says diet delight. The pears that make it fun to watch your weight. It looks kind of good, actually. Marshmallows. I love this image. This would be great in a baby book. This one is from 1967. Wow, look at these rugs. Town and Country magazine. This is from 1966. Okay, I 
I need to make a mental note that Women's Day magazines are typically really cool in terms of images. I love this over here. Wow, that is a cool image. This is a pretty cool magazine. I don't think I've ever seen this magazine, Town and Country, like vintage. All right, love that. Another Women's Day magazine from 1967. This is another reason why I would love to have a craft room with like a little deck that is maybe partly covered or something so that when I have dusty things like this, I can just like sequester it out there. Also so that I can um, maybe do mixed media like where there's more ventilation. That would be the dream craft room. Okay, these saltine crackers look so good. This is Cheese Whiz in a jar. I don't think they do that anymore, do they? Or maybe it's like nacho cheese dip like for chips or something. Um, but I love saltine crackers. I like eating them plain. Women's Day Magazine from 1967. Life just seems so different back then. And it's scary to think because if I, in 2021, look back to 1980, it doesn't seem that long. But for kids who look back to 1980, to them the 80s seems ancient. So it's kind of like when I was a kid in the 80s, and I thought about the 50s and that seemed like so long ago, but that was less time, like less time backwards than now backwards to 1980. Like that's just crazy to me. And I think that's partly why I love junk journals and finding vintage because it's all part of it. This is 1966. Time is just, it's a crazy thing. And it says so much about life and people. It's like we're living in the settings of movies. <laughs> like when you write a movie, write a script or something, a screenplay, you pick the setting and it says so much about the movie. It's almost like it's another character. Um, but our life, we don't get to pick that. It just we're born into it. I love her hair. I love all of these. I love that. I love that. Love that. And I love that. I mean, I really like that clip. It's kind of interesting how she's using it. Um, above sweeps up in large round curls caught back from the sleek front by a bow right above forms two tiers with high crown 
broad into up curl at back. Well, we already use those flowers. Fantasy flower earrings to make. Do they show us how to make these? They do. They kind of describe it. Okay, super cool. This is a fun cover. This is from 1967. That's a fun image. This is from 19, hmm, it doesn't say, it's kind of scratched off, but it's 10 cents, so it must be, it could be from the 60s or the early 70s. Family Circle from 1974, as you can see, I really just it was a matter of picking and choosing because they definitely had a lot of each of these magazines women's day magazine from 1967 Let's quickly see if there's anything interesting This is Women's Day Magazine, 1965. Women's Day, 1966. That's really cute. 100 great Christmas gifts to make. Instructions complete in this issue. I, I don't like seeing things like that because I'm tempted to make different things and I do not have time to do that. <laughs> wow, how 70s can you get? Look at that. Super cool. Um, Life magazine from 1961. This is from 1962. They wrote it up here because the cover is missing. That's a fun image. It's interactive. That is pretty cool. So here she's taking the picture of them. And then here she's getting ready to. That's really cool. All right, so those were the magazines. So dusty. <laughs> and the last thing I found was just kind of like a necessary, a little bit of a sensible, boring thing. <laughs> File folders with tabs on them. Or actually, this is a divider. So these are dividers. They're super dusty. And these are file folders. But yeah, that's what I found at this estate sale that I went to long ago. Um, pretty cool stuff. I just wish it wasn't so like grungy. Um, but I'm going to set this aside to clean it when it gets a little bit warmer here um but thank you so much for watching today and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos 
and I will talk to you next time. Bye everyone.